Hello, it's nice to have you folks back here at Murphy's Welcome to My World, episode number 31. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make camera cars, those little micro tiny cameras for your trains. This was the first one that I built. It was just a stationary stand so I could watch my trains running around. The problem was I kept forgetting to turn it off so the batteries would run down, so I added a switch to it. You can see it sitting here on my layout. I could point it different directions and watch what's going on, which was fun. Now these micro cameras, they put out an acceptably okay picture, which you can watch on your tablet, on your TV, stuff like that. Well, this was my first attempt at a car, and it's kind of clumsy. The box is covering up the battery, which is required, and the box was so wide it kept bumping into things and getting stuck. This is the second car I made. It's just a deep well car. The battery fit in nicely. The camera set nicely on the end of the car. But the way it's sitting, it was so high, it had a funny picture. So I tried this second car, making two little short cars, and see how I stuck it on the end of the car. Well, this was a total disaster. Not only did the camera keep falling forward and the car kept flipping up on its nose, but the wires were so stiff it wouldn't go around a corner. So here's the next car I built. See how I set the camera down lower? Battery sets nicely in the middle of the, of the recessed well. And of course I wanted to add some light so I could see inside of my tunnels and stuff. This one actually was a pretty good car. I still have this one. I ended up adding a switch to it because once again I kept forgetting to disconnect the battery and the battery would run down. Well here's the next one. I wanted to have the camera move around the corner the same direction that the truck was. So I moved it down and added it to the front of the truck. This one actually worked great. It tracks around just like you would think you would on a bicycle. And I put the battery in the center. The battery kind of fit okay, but I had cut so much of the car away that it started sagging in the middle. If you look carefully, you can see where I had to add some additional support to the car so it didn't sag in the middle. And of course I wanted to add a switch because, well, my pea brain keeps forgetting to disconnect them. So I put a little switch in. In an attempt to get rid of that big ugly battery, I got one of these DCC converters. It pulls the DCC up out of the track and turns it into the 9 volts necessary for the camera. So I tried that and I stuck it in the middle of a car and once again you see that the camera is on a pivot on the front truck. Unfortunately the wires were so stiff it wouldn't go around curves. So I tore it apart and it's time to build another one. I came across this really extra soft wire and I don't remember exactly where I got it but I've seen it three or four times since then. And by adding this wire and I had a new car body and I put the camera once again really close down to the track. It tracks around really nice. This was my first very successful car. Of course you gotta have a covering on it, you gotta have a car body. I am a little bit concerned about having it not look just like a machine. And here's how it came out. This one actually was a very successful car which I still have and it tracks around nicely puts a real good picture out and it runs on the DCC power with no battery. Well not all of my layout is DCC so I went back to the drawing board and built another battery car. This was my second very successful camera car and it tracks around very nicely it holds together really nicely and it produces a really nice picture. These little cameras are really good fun. Of course I wanted to add a battery shut off so I can turn it off. My little pea brain's going to forget to turn it off, that's for sure. But I wasn't satisfied. I wanted another one. So I had this little short box car that I put a different camera. I have a bunch of them. And the battery fit inside nicely. This one also tracks very nice, produces a very nice picture. I've had a lot of fun making these camera cars. Learned a lot on how to make them work. And of course in all of them, I've put a switch just because, because I like them. Now I do want to caution you on playing with these camera cars. It seems like any time I have my buddies over to play with my trains, they quit looking at the trains and they keep staring at the TV set. That's how much fun it is. As far as the range goes, oh, 
I'd say at least a couple 300 feet you can still get a pretty good picture and I have put lights on all of my cameras simply because I like to see inside of places you know tunnels and stuff like that which means you have to finish your tunnel and as far as the switches are concerned well that's your choice if you can remember to unplug it you don't need them I just like the convenience ah yes am I done with building camera cars no way man here's my next project this is gonna be an interesting one that camera has its battery already interior so I don't have to have a separate battery and that little servo motor you see on the bottom well I'm gonna try to make it a DCC controllable so I can point it different directions as it's running around yeah we'll see if it works and these are my five most successful camera cars I know some people think I need to get a job or something but it's been so much fun what can I say and here's my biggest critic this is my kitty what's she telling me here uh, I guess she doesn't like that one so let's see what the pictures look like I got some movies here and we'll run around my layout <laughs> 